Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Roundnet Legends. Um, I'm really excited about this one today. As you can see, I am joined by Becca Graham. If you don't know Becca, I, I really think you should. Um, <laughs> she's been playing since the early, early days. She has enough pitchers to open a bar. And of course, that's not counting uh, the four national championship trophies that she had. Um, so I'm really excited to talk with her and share kind of the story of her journey through Women's Around It uh, over the past few years. So welcome, Becca. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Super excited. So, um, so I just touted a million things, but I want to start way back at the beginning before any of that happened with just your first experience of RoundNet. Yeah. Um, so my first experience of RoundNet uh, was in June of 2013. Um, ironically, the first time I met Joel, my husband. <laughs> uh, so Joel and Scott Wilson, Nashburg, were um, interning for Spikewell Inc. at the time. And they had set up a booth at Creation Festival, which is a big music festival in Pennsylvania. I was there, this was the year after I graduated high school. Um, so I was there with my church youth group, which um, Allie Rogers, The Hex, lots of the original Lank Ballers were a part of. Um, I think Corey first stumbled upon the game, met Scott and Joel, came back, brought a huge group of us to their booth, um, taught us how to play. That was actually our first tournament that week as well. They were hosting tournaments um, at the festival. And I think we had 40 some teams maybe that, that signed up, which is crazy because in 2013, that yeah. was pretty big. That was like one of the biggest tournaments. How many people do you think that was their first time playing? Probably all of them. Yeah. Okay. Probably all of them. yeah. And it's crazy because creation was a huge, I think that's why Lank Brownnet got as big as it did. A mm -hmm. lot of people from Lancaster go to creation every year. So Scott and Joel, and then eventually other ballers were there every summer promoting the game, selling mm -hmm. sets, giving stuff away. Um, yeah. So that was my first experience of Brownnet. Did you play in the, you played in the tournament? Yeah. Allie oh. and I played together actually as Beck and Allie. That was Beck our Allie, original team game. Yep. Um, we, we got whooped by some like eight-year-old boys I think it was pretty embarrassing <laughs> I don't think anyone ever wants to talk about their real like first time playing <laughs> mine was I lost to like my my uncle and my cousin and I was just like so lost and so frustrated yeah, yeah. but that so you're telling me the entire so I knew that I knew that you met Joel there I didn't know that this was like the inception of inceptions that's not the right word to use that is where it started. The whole yeah. length thing, yep. you all, you all got it right there. Yep, pretty much. So we came back from that. Uh, it's like a, a four day long festival. We came back from that and that summer, the rest of that summer, we started doing weekly. And then I think twice a week um, meetups. And it was like, mm. Allie, most of the hex, Kyle, Caleb, Corey, uh, their older sister, Allie, who's my good friend. Mm. Um, the Zimmermans eventually, I don't know if they were at creation, but Micah and Joey, they eventually started playing with us um, and a bunch of other people and it grew pretty quickly. Um, but that was, yeah, that was the the origins of Lank Roundnet. Did you leave the festival being like, we have to do this more? Or did like, did someone kind of leave the, lead the charge? I think Corey was, was the most enthusiastic about it. He was pretty stoked about it from the <laughs> beginning. Um, and we all really liked it, mm -hmm. but... I, if I remember correctly, he was the one that was kind of setting up the weekly meetings and inviting tons of people. Um, but yeah, it was it was fun. So that summer we played a lot. And then um, I went to college and didn't play very much that year throughout the year. I think some people still did in like um, I wasn't around a whole lot. So it kind of died off a little bit. But then the following summer, it really ramped up again, I'd say. Mm -hmm. So the following summer, 2014? Correct. So, when, 2014. Yeah. so yeah. when did you make the transition or I guess anyone in the group, the transition to going to uh, tournaments or were you hosting tournaments there on we, top of weekly? No, the first tournament that I attended um, was the Keystone Classic that Corey hosted in 2014, September 2014. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us were back at creation in June of 2014. Um, and 
started playing more again throughout that summer. And then Corey hosted a tournament, which was the first light tournament, I think, um, in fall 2014. Right. I remember that, like Joel and Scott were there, right? Yeah. And yep. uh, I remember Ian and uh, uh, Ian and if, Larkin. Yeah, Ian and Larkin. Yeah. Yeah, and the rookies were there as well. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah. think Brother Zim played, and I I think that I've heard Jesse Showalter was there as well. Really? Maybe he played with Micah. He may have played with Micah. I didn't know him at the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there were actually a fair amount of people. I can't remember exactly how many teams he had for that. Yeah. Um, but that was, I, I was playing with a friend of mine from college, Allie and I brought some college friends with us to play. Um, and he dislocated his shoulder in the first game of pool play. Okay. So I had to take him to the emergency room <laughs> and didn't make it back until the finals. So I kind of, that was kind of my first tournament, but I didn't get to play a whole lot. That's, that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. So, so the whole time, and that was your tournament. And then did you, did you didn't attend, um, nationals did you or regionals or did you no so 2014 okay. nationals which was in california mm -hmm. um joel and i were not dating yet but we were talking quite a bit so i remember he called me a couple times throughout the day and was updating it updating me and i was super into it and following the teams i think there was kind of a stream they were trying to do a live stream and it didn't mm -hmm. really work um but i remember seeing chico in their their old tux jerseys <laughs> yeah and i thought they were so cool um, but I did not attend. And then, uh, my first actual tournament that I played in was, um, San Diego in February of 2015. So Joel and I flew out to San Diego, um, and they were doing filming for Shark Tank. So that was super Got fun. It. That was kind yeah. of my first full tournament that I actually played in. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Was there any, yeah, that tournament, who did you play with? I played with Joel. Was there any um idea idea about women's round net or was that was that a thought at the time did not you remember really, anything not that i knew of i think that in california there were a few ladies that played regularly like with buddy and bryce um and i met a few of them at that tournament but there were no women's divisions i don't think i think i may have been the only female playing in the tournament there may have been one other mm -hmm. um so it was pretty, yeah, that wasn't really in the cards at the time. Pretty good. So at this point for you, um, obviously you were following along with Joel and we're into it. Did you think of that at this point as a competitive thing for you or was it more of a, I don't want to say like fun, fun thing? Like, were yeah. you serious at the time? I know like back in the day, not everyone was really serious about it, but how were yeah. you thinking about it? Um, up until that point, it was, it was mostly just fun although i am very competitive so it was pretty mm -hmm. exciting um that tournament was super hyped just because there were camera crews filming um it felt very intense and i was playing with joel who was much better than i and at the time he was you know one of the top players in the country so i felt pretty like i needed to keep up yeah um, we did decently i remember we beat ball blasters uh maybe in wow. play we beat I think we went to three close games with classy vacuums. Mm -hmm. um, that may have been who kicked us out, but I think we made it to at least round of 16, if not the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. um, that was probably a good spark for my competitive fuel. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say the real, like the real, uh, the time when it was really become clear that I wanted to compete was probably 2015 nationals, which mm -hmm. was the first ever women's division. Cool. Um, so that yeah. was kind of the like, Oh, this is, this is something that I could really work at. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's jump there. So 2015 nationals, there was a women's division. So is this the, this was the first women's division that you'd, you'd seen. Yeah. That was the first one, I think in any, for sure in any of the like, USA round net, USA spike ball tournaments, but mm -hmm. it may have been the first ever. I'm not sure. Yeah. And then, so, um, what led you to an alley playing together? Like, mm -hmm. was that kind of always the plan? Yeah. So we learned together, obviously. Um, and we went to college together as well as high school. So when we were in school, we were playing with our friends. Um, we were kind of driving the, the round net scene at our college. Um, and I think it just made sense. We didn't have a ton of other female friends that were really into it. And we both were really excited about it. Loved sports, loved competing. Um, so 
I think it was just kind of, it just made sense. Yeah. We lived together for a couple of years. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so you were back in alley at the time. <laughs> back um, in alley, which soon turned into, oh man, we had so many team names. We changed all the time. We were always changing our minds, <laughs> but eventually led to Ogre's Heroes. Are you... Are you happy you settled on Ogre's Heroes? No. <laughs> we both hated it. <laughs> well, you stuck with it. So that's pretty we cool. We stuck with it. At some yeah. point, it was just too late to change. Is it? <laughs> so I want to say, I think that myself included for a long time, people in the community either think you guys won 2015 Nationals or you didn't go. I don't think many people know that you guys came in second. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you did. talk me through that day. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll back up a little bit. 2015 was a little crazy. Um, we did play a few tournaments together. I'm trying to remember. I know there was another one in length that we played. Yeah. Um, I played with, I started traveling a little bit more. Uh, Joel and I were dating then in 2015. So I remember I went to Nashville with him. Mm -hmm. I actually played with Chris Reuter in the Nashville tournament that year. Um, and then in the fall of 2015, I tore my ACL in September, I believe. And we had already signed up for nationals, which was mid-October. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided not to get surgery on it until after nationals. And I played, I think, five tournaments on a torn ACL <laughs> at the end of that season. Oh. So by then, I definitely had the bug. I was, I was yeah. really into it. They're pushing then. through. Yes. Um, so we got to nationals, and there were 13 women's teams. Um, I can't remember everyone that went, but it was super fun. We were having a great time. We were still pretty green. Um, you know, obviously the game, the sport was pretty new at that point. So people were still figuring things out, but I think the games were probably pretty sloppy. Mm -hmm. um, and then we ended up matching up in the finals with a team called Luigi and Shep. Um, their names are Jen. I can't remember, <laughs> um, but they were, they were known for, they had played in the Southeast. I think they were from Tennessee mm -hmm. um, and were playing for a while as well. Mm -hmm. um, and they were known for hitting on two, their whole club. They had like a group of them and they were just big two hitters. And okay. Allie and I had never experienced that. Uh, we had a really hard time adjusting and mm -hmm. trying to play defense <laughs> against their two hits. Um, not to mention, I was pretty slow at the time. I wasn't moving super quickly. Um, so, yes, we, we took second. We lost in a tight three-game series yeah. to them in the finals and took second, and I knew I wasn't satisfied. <laughs> so you're telling me there was a – this winning strategy was to hit it on two. At that point, I guess so. <laughs> we That's clearly so couldn't funny. catch up. <laughs> I mean, it shows how long we, we've come because I think – there was a point in my game where like a drop shot was like the best thing. Right. Right. And then it like obviously wasn't, you know, who Joel taught me that you can't drop Joel. He's <laughs> coming can't. in, he's coming you in can't. swinging with his arm. Yep. But that's so funny yep. that, that that was a yep. thing. And, yep. and I think that touches to early in the day. Um, you learn so much every tournament mm -hmm. and, and like, right. You've never experienced that before. And right. you're probably feeling so lost. Yeah. And obviously we had so much less experience of how to yeah. adjust, but. Yeah, I remember in between games, we were getting some coaching from George Risk and Chris Place and mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to play defense. And we were running some drills with like defending a two hit and it didn't work, I guess. But yeah, yeah it was very new to us. That's so funny. That's so cool. Yeah. So at that point, so you and Al, were you so you had the bug so did you and Ali have the bug together were you like let's do this together yeah I would say so at least at that point um going into 2016 it changed a little bit but at least at that point we were kind of I think on the same page of like yeah we want to compete more now mm -hmm. that you know a women's division happened and there was kind of some future prospects of that happening more often mm -hmm. yeah yeah. So at the time, I know the only other prominent women's player was Jenna, uh, Jenna Coleman, but she played in the, in the open division with, with Ian that whole season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, did you try to recruit her over to play more women's? I can't remember. I, I can't remember when I met Jenna in person. Um, but eventually, yeah. When, when um, I can't, I think Julie was her first 
official teammate. Maybe she played with someone before that. Um, but it was very exciting when she started playing in the women's division more often. Yeah. I think that happened in 2016. Yeah, so I think in 2016, we moved there now, the, the big formation, I think, was Origin XX, yes. um, which yeah. finally, you know, went from one team, Beck and Alley, to now two. Yes. With Origin XX, as Julie Hazleton and Molly McCauley, part of the Origin Club out of Chicago. Mm-hmm. And, if, and so, but the, I think Jenna did play, but I think she just played with a bunch of different people. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Cause she played with uh, Sam at 2016 nationals, but I think that may have been their first time playing together. Yeah. So I think she yeah. did mix it up a bit. And then I remember um, at camp that year, she played with uh, Allie Heck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Origin XX, so you had some women, so I, uh, women's together. Did you, were there a lot of women's divisions in 2016? Or I know a lot of times it's the women's division would be done after. Um, yeah. was, um, what was the standard? Yeah. I'm looking at my, I actually have always kept a tournament list. Um, I think that they only did women's divisions for Grand Slams and Nationals in mm-hmm. 2016. I'm pretty sure that's how it went. Um, yeah, because I, I mixed it up a little bit. Allie and I played in some tournaments in 2016, but not in women's divisions. But then regionals, we w- that was the year where you could go to as many regionals as you wanted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we went to a few regionals and played in women's divisions. Yeah. Okay. And then, and do you remember any teams outside of kind of Origin XX? Um, there wasn't. Whoever Jenna played with was going to be was going to be in the top. Um, mm-hmm. Not until the end. When hamburgers Bente Ambergesas came out of nowhere, they yep. showed up to nationals, and I don't think anyone had ever heard of them. Yep. Um, so they didn't come till the end of 2016. So other than Origin XX, I know that was the rival of the year. We were matching up with mm-hmm. them at every regional and wherever yep. we played. Um, but there wasn't really. There were a few other regular women's players, um, Chrissy Troyer and and Ashley. Mm-hmm. Joe Walter, not PJ's Ashley. Um, they played together for a couple tournaments. I think it was 2016. Uh, so there were some others, but no one's super consistent. Yeah. So you fully had the bugs. So did you attend a lot of tour stops this year? But you're saying just not women's divisions? But you Yeah, yeah. I think I played in probably 15 or 16 tournaments in, in 2016. Mm-hmm interesting which was a lot that, that is a lot that's <laughs> that that's a lot of course how many of those do you think were in lank or adjacent uh let's see here <laughs> there was a lancaster tour stop uh not too many actually um yeah i i don't remember when the season started so i i studied abroad in the beginning of 2016 and mm. i came back and immediately when i got back we played in the dc uh tour stop which i think was in may and then the rest of that, that was the, 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 the hottest one in the world. Yes. Yeah. Was, it was very hot. I remember that. That one was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> that was so bad. Um, wow. Okay. We, and then we, so you we played this. a good bit that year. I remember traveling a fair amount. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, so nationals, um, again, were you, were you, ex- so you did all the women's division and then you're going into this, were you super stoked to, to do another women's division? Yeah, yeah, we were very excited, especially because the, the growth between 2015 and 16 was pretty significant. I think we more than doubled the women's mm-hmm. teams. Um, we had, yeah, probably 25 or so, which was really exciting at the yeah. time. Um, I think we really wanted to win, but I don't know that we quite expected to win yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was still, you know, like very exciting, very, we were working really hard for it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was really yeah fun. that's what I want to ask. Like, I don't really remember who were the favorites going in because, um, I, so you were beating up on Origin XX last year, XX that year, so you're above them. And Vente, Vente was new, but they were pretty good. But I, I think people may have led towards uh, She Wolves, Jenna and Sam. Like, yeah, yeah, just because yeah. Jenna was just the name. Yeah, exactly. I don't remember who would have been the favorites but jenna was definitely she was the top women's baller up until Mm -hmm. that point so i think whatever team she was on people kind of expected um and yeah i don't think she played in a whole lot of women's tournaments that year leading Mm -hmm. up to nationals so people may not have known how we'd match up against her um but yeah it was it was exciting yeah and i remember um 
Uh, I feel like, so your matches may not have been long, but just back in the day, they felt long, you know, like there was so much running and diving. I remember watching yeah. it. It looked exhausting. Yeah. 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 It was women's round at that time was really fun. It was tons of rallies, lots mm -hmm. of um, you know, people were getting better at hitting. So it wasn't just really, you know, easy hits, but mm -hmm. there was a lot of hustle in the game as well with like Tori and Char. They were both mm -hmm. extremely scrappy. Jenna, of course, is really quick and all over the place. So they were super fun games to watch and play. Yeah. And then, and obviously you guys won. Um, yeah. so, so you said you didn't really expect it, but kind of how did you feel? Yeah, I remember playing in pool play we actually played Luigi and Shep from 2015. They were there um, and we beat them pretty handily. So that was like, a, all right, we've grown, we've yep. come far. Yep. <laughs> um, and then we didn't match up with um, hamburgers until the semifinals. And we had heard kind of murmurs through the crowd about them throughout the day that like, well, these girls came out of nowhere. They're really good. So I remember going into that game. I was super nervous uh -huh. um, just because all I had heard was people saying they're really good. Yeah. At that point, it was really hard to gauge how good you yourself were against the competition just right. because, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of playing. Yeah. Um, so we matched up with them and had some really fun games. We won pretty handily, I think. Um, that was also, I think, the first game or one of the first games we had observers for. Um, I remember Dylan observed, which was really, yeah, really interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, they were really exciting games. I think once we won that series, we both felt pretty comfortable um, mm. against Jenna yeah. and Sam. And those were really good games as well. I think it, we won in two again, pretty handily, um, but still mm. really good games. Do you have an idea of what kind of set you apart um that tournament over the other teams i think at that point even at that point we had a lot more experience um than pretty much everyone except jenna mm -hmm. um but we had at that point been playing for almost three years um playing a lot when we were in link and also playing a fair amount when we were in college um we were training and practicing with joel with you know atlas i forget i think atlas formed I can't remember if it was 2015 or 2016. Um, Good question. I think 2016. Was, I think 2016. I think it was, yeah, 2016. So that was, you know, Joel and Scott, Seth, um, eventually PJ and Tyler. So we were practicing a fair amount with, you know, a variety mm -hmm. of players from that club, just getting a lot more experience, I think, than a lot of the other women's players. I would say that's probably the one thing that set us apart was just playtime experience. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I want, I'm going to move on to 2017. And so it went from one steady team to two to now we had three 2017 had the big three. So yeah. Julie, um, from origin XX teamed with Jenna for Moxie, which mm -hmm. is a long time, great team. And then of course, Vente stuck around with Tori and, and Char. Um, I, I, so you had the big three. So I, well, I guess my question here is actually, after your championship, didn't you and Allie think about not playing together or were you like going into like, all right, here comes another year? I definitely didn't think about it. I don't know if she did, <laughs> um, but I think still at that point, there weren't enough competitive women's players out there that we could choose from. Mm -hmm. um, and we enjoyed playing together, but it was kind of, you know, again, it was just what made sense. Yeah. So I, I love that that like we went into the year and they were like okay there's more teams coming especially moxie foreman because jenna was now officially on a team mm -hmm. um so i was like spoilers right you guys didn't lose a tournament that year mm -hmm. but the thing is you did lose some series because a lot of the women's divisions were double elimination yeah um i want to take your opinion on those double elimination because truthfully they looked exhausting and they were just, I remember watching and it would just be like, dang, you guys lost. Now you got to play a whole another few games. Yeah. I think they, they were tiring. I think they worked out really well for Allie and I, and that's what people say about double elimination, you know, less possibility for upsets. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that it consciously made us work less hard in the, you know, the front draw, but I think we always felt pretty confident that we could win out even mm -hmm. if we dropped. So I think, I can't remember if we 
how many times we did that, but I know it happened occasionally that we dropped and then pretty easily won our way through the loser's bracket and still mm -hmm. went home with the trophy. That's fine. So, yeah. I don't know that, you know, there probably would have been more upsets if we hadn't done double limb, but the tournaments would have been so short, you know, even in 2017, yeah. most of our women's divisions were six, six teams, eight, yeah. if it was a really good day. <laughs> so there wasn't really a good way to do it, to get a lot of games in without doing double elimination. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So on a similar vein about the size of the divisions, um, yeah. something I wanted to get into is in the open division, there was always in the beginning, the issue of, top teams playing against first time players. Mm -hmm. And then of course, advanced and intermediate formed. So the separation was big and yeah. then premier was formed. So again, it was bigger, but in women's, you guys were often in divisions as national champs with first time, first time tournament goers. Yeah. Um, I want to ask like, how was that experience? Like kind of having this extra role and kind of having to manage this, um, this, this little, I don't know, kind of conglomerate division. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was, I think, you know, selfishly, we both would have enjoyed playing more competitive games at these tournaments. And a lot of times we would, we started doing advanced and women's. Um, we were allowed to do two divisions. So we'd do a women's division. It would finish pretty quickly. And then we would have time to jump in advanced or we do the women's division after more often after we dropped out of advanced. Um, so that allowed us to get some more play in. Um, but we both, Ali and I were really excited about women's round net and tried to work really hard and recruit lots of women and encourage newer players. So it was a good opportunity, I think, for us to to teach a little bit. And we did a lot of that because, yeah, most of the women's divisions had one or two or maybe three competitive women's teams and the rest were very very new um usually first timers mm -hmm. so it was a good opportunity to teach and just you know show people that women's round net can be really fun um we would play around and rally um yeah and we wouldn't you know ever intentionally lose but we would make the games go as long as they could and you know have a lot of fun with it so it was fun i think when we when we weren't playing in the advanced division, it was a little bit disappointing that we'd have, you know, one competitive series in the day. Mm -hmm. um, but when we started doing advanced as well, it allowed yeah. us to kind of get both sides. Would, would that in those divisions ever affect your decision to travel to a tournament? You know, I know sometimes people look online and be like, Oh, there's no <clears> good teams going. Would you guys feel the same for women's? There were never any <laughs> good women's divisions, <laughs> even in 2017. Um, yeah, not really, because I don't I don't know that we ever had. I'm trying to think of like the tournaments that we went to. I doubt we ever had more than eight or ten teams. Yeah. Um, and because, like you said, there were really at that point only three or four really solid competitive teams. Mm -hmm. It was like if they were going, we would definitely try to go. But even if they weren't, we would try to play in advance and still have a women's division. Mm -hmm. um so no i would say that, that didn't really affect our decision to travel it was kind of just you know we were growing we were trying to get the women's division to grow so mm -hmm. having one was helpful um but playing in tournaments was was what we really wanted to okay. do yeah um and then oh i'm gonna just miss my train of thought here <laughs> so they were challenging you right moxie was challenging you there venti was challenging you that year yeah what, did, yeah what did you guys do like in between tournaments and in between stuff to to keep on that high like you know it, it they're getting not catching up you guys got to keep doing so what were you guys doing to kind of stay a step ahead yeah uh we still practiced a fair amount um but again we played in a lot of tournaments so i probably played in 15 or 20 in 2017 um so we were still traveling a lot ali uh, did not, we didn't go to the same school that year, I believe for most of 2017. Um, so we weren't living together. We weren't practicing quite as much together. Um, but whenever we were both in Lank, we were, you know, practicing, playing a lot, doing drills. I was playing pretty frequently with Joel and some people, Joel and Scott and some people in the Pittsburgh area when I was at school. Mm -hmm. Um, so still, I think just how much we were playing. I don't know for sure about other women's teams. I know, you know, um sometimes julie and and jenna would practice but they didn't live in the right, same state right 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 um, they were yeah. pretty far apart so i think just the amount of 
play that we were doing was still the thing that kind of kept us above. We're both very competitive and did a fair amount of practice as in like drills. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know that many women's players were doing that at the time. Um, So outside of, you know, playing in a lot of tournaments, playing a lot of pickup, we were also doing like training. Um, So I think that definitely helped too. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. So I'll jump forward to 2017 nationals. So definitely even the most competitive again, ever. I, f- I think there were 16 teams or 17, which yeah, is one dropped, of the biggest I've ever seen. Dropped down a little bit from uh, 2016 nationals, but it was definitely more competitive. Yeah. And yeah. so at the time there were you guys, there was Moxie, there was Vente, but also, so there was Whipper Snappers, mm-hmm. Jordy uh, Vigna and Sam Callisto, who had some hype, I believe they beat Moxie at West Regionals. Yes. So going in, they had a win on Moxie and it's like, okay. Yeah. Um, and then Cougs, which I guess we didn't really know. I mean, people knew about before, but didn't they expect weren't. them to do as well. Yeah. Um, so I guess we touched about it, but like going into this event, were you nervous, one, about those new teams and two, that it was going to be single limb and you kind of had to be on your game? Uh I remember being nervous about whippersnappers um, because yeah, we saw, we saw the win that they got and we would, we played pretty tightly with Moxie. We never dropped to them, but we played, you know, we had pretty tight games with them. So the fact that whippersnappers took, you know, took that um, we had never seen Jordy before, didn't know her at all. Sam had played with Jenna the previous year um, and did pretty well. So I was definitely nervous about that. Um, Kooks. I, I remember being so impressed with them throughout the day. I think we, we definitely knew them pretty well at that point um, and had played with them some, but they just had a, a fiery day. Um, yeah, we, we played whippersnappers in pool play and barely won. Um, and then when we saw we matched up with them in bracket, I remember being pretty nervous as well. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, other than that, I remember Christina was playing with Chrissy Troyer, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so there were some other really good competitive teams. Mm-hmm. Um, overall, I don't think we were super nervous about, about winning out. At that point, it had been a really good year for us. We were pretty getting in a groove competitively. Um, and then our games with whippersnappers pretty quickly uh, became clear that, you know, it was experience was paying off for us. Um, there were still fun games, but I don't think they were super close. And then after that, we kind of, you know, cruised through the end. But it was fun to see a lot more competitive teams. I think that for sure was the most competitive women's yeah. tournament to date. It was really exciting because I think Cougs beat Vente, if I was if yeah. I'm right. And that and was just Moxie. like, whoa. They beat Vente and Moxie. Yeah. Like that was I mean, so so were you you kind of were you nervous at that point when they beat those two? I was super impressed. I don't remember being nervous. Um, and I think probably that's just because it was a little bit less unknown um, because we had played both yeah. of them a few times yeah. and just knew their their play style a little bit better than, you know, Jordy, who we had never seen before. Yep. Cool. That's fun. Um, do you have a favorite, do you have a favorite match from that day or that year? Um, that day or that year? <laughs> either i was so i was gonna say day but then i'm like what if they were all bad so i'll extend it to year favorite match for that day was probably uh the match with whippersnappers i think because we were a little nervous about it and then kind of felt comfortable in it and we played really cleanly Mm -hmm. um it was just a very like clockwork series and it was fun they were scrappy and really uh, hustled a lot so it was a fun series but i think we both felt like we we're playing pretty well um, by that point mm-hmm. for that year, 2017. Um, I think probably uh, I'm trying to remember. I think we played in um, Santa Monica, the grand slam. Yeah. Santa Monica grand slam um, and played Moxie. And I remember, and it was definitely double limb because we played them twice. Um, and both of those matches were super tense really fun but we always had a pretty healthy rivalry with them um so they were very tense games but i like that i'm competitive and i remember having tons of fun we were not super experienced on sand but yeah adjusted relatively well um so that'd be up there for a favorite match of that season but we did play a lot (laughs) yeah so and 
you play these teams so much. Can you tell me about like these rivalries you had with them? Cause I know you guys were also friends. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a really interesting point in women's round net because we didn't often have observers, um, but we started to need them more. So we started trying to find them, but it was even harder than it is now because most people didn't know the rules very well. Most people were more into watching, you know, the final yeah. rounds of, of the open division. Um, so I remember trying to find observers was pretty hard. Um, serving was very different. You know, we had, I think Ali and I were both really strong servers in 2017 um, because the rules were a little different. Uh, yeah. Ali with her fall over Fuango, that was one of her <laughs> signature serves and she would ace on it a lot. Uh, but yeah, we, we were pretty strong servers, but they were as well. So I think, I don't know, our, it was super fun. We loved mm -hmm. playing them. If we had to choose, I think I would have chosen to have more teams, you know, more competitive teams, but it was matching up with, it was fun matching up with the same people over and over again. I think we did learn each other's play styles pretty well, which yeah. allowed Ali and I to develop pretty strong defensive strategies against them. Um, but yeah, it was. Yeah, cool. it makes it such a different day for when you have to yeah. play them all the time because yeah. your your better serves maybe don't work, your certain hits maybe do, and it becomes a much different game. Right. There's yeah. many more layers to it. Definitely. Cool. Yeah. All right, 2018. Again, add it again. We yeah. had even more. We had you guys. Moxie was back. Uh, Coogs was in the running, and then of course Razmataz formed, which yeah. was the big one. Tori and Jordy. Yeah. Um, so I guess my question here is less about Razmataz, but more of you two, two national championships, hadn't, hadn't lost in a very long time. Sean Boyer always talks about the phrase, heavy lies the crown. Um, do you think that applies to kind of you guys as you kept going on and on? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, 2018 was a really weird year. Namely, Allie and I differed pretty drastically that year on our uh, just our intensity. Um, I think Allie lost a little bit of zeal. She had, you know, was kind of busy with other life things. She was working and going to school. We weren't living together. Um, so the, the balance started to skew a little bit as far as like how much we each wanted to travel and how competitive we were. Um, that made it a little difficult. I think that was probably our worst year play wise. Um, we, we weren't training as much. We weren't playing as much. We still went to a lot of tournaments. Um, but then yes, definitely there was also that, that pressure. We were still definitely seen as the number one team um, and really wanted to keep that, but we were starting to have to work for it a lot harder. Not that we weren't working hard before, um, cause I think we were, but people were catching up quickly. Yeah. Allie and I always say that we're not the most athletic either of us. I don't think we're both athletes and have always been, but there are a lot of really athletic women's players that will catch up to us, you know, quickly if they work hard mm -hmm. is what we've always said. Um, and that started to become apparent just with like Jordy, for example, she started playing in, you know, 2017, the very end of the season. And by beginning of 2018, she was already getting very good very quickly. Right. Um, whereas, you know, Allie and I had to kind of work through all the learning stages of the sport as it grew. Now it was kind of, you can jump in and, and catch up much more quickly. Um, so yeah, 2018 was a really interesting year. We, yeah, we got our first loss in over a year and a half, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then, it seemed like every tournament was not a guarantee anymore, which was, yeah. which was new. And, you know, to some degree it was exciting. I was glad for that because, you know, I think it was good for, for the sport. Um, but it was also made it challenging because we still really wanted to win and to do well. Um, mm -hmm. But there's just more competition out there. Yeah. I don't think you ever officially dropped from number one. So we got that, but um, yeah, you had the losses. Can you, like, what, what was it like when you had that, that first, first loss? Yeah. Yeah. So it was Razmataz in, I think it was Santa Monica, some mm -hmm. California tournament, um, in 2018 and Razmataz took it. I don't think that tournament, I think we were past the double limb stages now. I think we were pretty much just doing single limb. Um, it was tough. I remember feeling like the games were just passing and, there wasn't really like, it was pretty ordinary. Nothing crazy was happening. I didn't feel like 
they were outplaying us incredibly, but I knew we weren't playing as well as we could. Yeah. Um, and it was just kind of a weird, I knew that we were losing. I'm pretty sure it was three games. Um, unless it was actually, you know what? It may have been double elimination and we may have played two series with them. I can't remember a lot of tournaments. Yeah. Yeah. Together. Um, but it, they were, they were close if I remember correctly, but it just kind of was like nothing crazy happened and they won, and then you lost. Yeah. which was, yeah, kind of disappointing in that. I think I started to realize that we're going to have to work harder if we want to stay on top because, you know, just baseline play, we're now able to lose right. versus before it was kind of like, if we just play clean, you know, player baseline, we'll pretty much win. Right. You would have expected like they need some, some nice aces right. or some exactly. nice conversions. Yeah. And it's like, no, you both just played and they yeah. won. Yeah. That's what it felt like. So that was, it was tough. I mean, yeah, I don't like losing in mm-hmm. anything, but, but it was, it was a good, I think it was overall good for women's round net. I think it helped other women's teams to start working harder um, you know, when first place seems like it's just given to one team, it's less motivating to, to work hard. So I think yeah. it was, it was good in a sense. Um, after that, we started to see more Canadian ballers come out. So Nancy and Fred and, um, Marie Eve, they started playing more. Mm-hmm. We almost dropped to, um, to Nancy and Marie Eve in the Lancaster tournament, which were games to 15, yeah. um, with a cap at 15, I think. So they were a little bit unusual cameras all around, but I think we won 15, 14 in game three, maybe, which was Mm -hmm. pretty crazy. Uh, So things, yeah, just started to get a little bit more tight. Yeah. And I think, you know, you know, thinking back, I don't think you say like first was given to one team. It may have felt like that, but that was never right. My experience, I could, we could clearly see you guys, you know, working hard and, and outplaying these, these teams, you know, you weren't, yeah. you know, I guess it like everyone was working, working really hard and yeah. you guys just had it. Um, but I think it just was a testament to people improving. Like when, when Nancy and Marie came down, like they were really yeah. good. And I think like, Definitely. it was just surprising. And it wasn't like, you guys weren't getting worse. It's just, these other people were just really getting good. Yeah. Yeah, it's very true, which was really exciting for women's round net. Um, yeah, it just made it more fun. It was more intense, but it was yeah. more fun as a competitor to yeah have a lot of teams yeah. that you know you don't know who's going to take first. Yeah, and we, we've talked about it forever with with Chico and and CS. But once they there is that loss, it does add that sense of possibility. Yeah, that that opens it up so much. Like sure. when I was watching you guys go three series with moxie right i'm not really nervous right i'm or i'm not really thinking that you guys aren't gonna win um because you because you hadn't but at this point it's like okay um so um before this well because of course nationals can talk about it but the first thing i want to talk about is you mentioned your intensity with atley and of course, that is something you are known for, and you definitely showed it in 2018 Nationals, which we'll talk about in a sec. But is that something that you've always had or something you tried to cultivate, kind of this intensity? And I also want to know what goes through your head during a match. Yeah, um, I think I've, I've always been competitive. I've always played sports, you know, since I could run. Um, I don't think that that's anything new. For me, Roundnet definitely brings it out. Roundnet was a really good, like post, post high school, post college sports when the you know the competitive void starts to open up. Exactly, it really fills that. Everyone void. relates. Yeah. So yeah, I really think I hung on to that because it's really fun for me to compete at anything in any sport. Um, what goes through my head? Um, I'm, I'm a pretty, I would say a pretty balanced mental player. I don't really have a lot of ups and downs. I just tend to be very focused, which, yeah, I think apparently I look that way. <laughs> apparently it can be a little terrifying for people. Um, I don't know. I, I don't have a lot of like, uh, yeah, I don't know. A lot, I don't think a lot goes through my head. I kind of just focus on the basics, the things that I want to do, how I want to perform, you know, specific yeah. things. 
um, that I'm working on. Like a lot of times in 2018, throughout that year was setting, I was struggling a little bit with setting. So I would just try to think, you know, focus on the, the things that I was yeah. trying to improve on. Um, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to think like, you know, you, you mess up a hit and you hit it right towards them or hit a rim. Like what, what, what do you, what do you, what, what comes in? Yeah. Happens all the time. I mean, and I think because I've played sports for a long time, I think I've pretty well mastered the move on, you know, next mm-hmm. point. You just, if you don't, if you dwell on it, it's just going to get worse. Yep. So I've tried to work, you know, work hard at, at just continuing that mindset and, you know, you make mistakes mm-hmm. and around it. It's very obvious. Um, 2018 was, yeah, like I said, an interesting year for Allie and I, and I remember after the, the Santa Monica Grand Slam, um, we won, but we tried taking stats uh, with Joel because he and Scott would often do that together. Um, mm-hmm. And it did not go well. <laughs> we nearly, nearly lost the friendship. There. Really? <laughs> not quite. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but I remember it was very tense. One of us left the room at one point, um, even with Joel as the mediator. Round Nut's such an interesting, like, you know, you feel very, uh, it's all perception. So like, is it a bad set or was it a missed hit? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Has to decide. And when it's yeah. only the two of you, your mistakes are really obvious. So all that to say, you know, I try to focus on, you know, just moving on and it, I'm going to hit rim. Sometimes I'm going to miss a hit. Mm-hmm. Got to move on. I like that. Cool. So with that 2018 nationals, obviously you guys going for three in a row, but there was, it was again, very competitive. You had Ligurtha, the Canadians who almost beat you that year. Razmat has who did, uh, Cougs, Moxie. Um, and it was on sand on top of that, where you guys said, you said you were a little more yeah. uncomfortable. Um, how were you feeling going into that day? Definitely the most, uh, I don't know that I'd say nervous. I was probably nervous, but just the most unsure that we had been yet. I think about, you know, are we going to win or not? Yeah. Um, which consequently when we did win, I think that one felt the best. Um, Mm -hmm. personally, I felt like I had worked really hard that season and earned it. Uh, again, not that we hadn't before, but there was just more competition. So it felt a little bit more, yeah, yeah, it felt a little bit more earned. Um, yeah, it was, it was super exciting. I think that nationals was a little bit more hyped than, than the past years, especially the women's division. There was a featured court, which was a new thing. Um, so it definitely felt, yeah, just more progressively more competitive than, than past years. Yeah. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And what um, Sean Bora touched on in a recent rally podcast was that although, you know, Jordy was kind of the only new age player there you know tori and and moxie had been around for a long time um but you guys you know the 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 hard part with you guys is since planks 2013 you are relearning strategies constantly Mm -hmm. you know you it's not just hey like i think that's the hard part about growing in the Mm -hmm. sport is every year you guys had to probably unlearn things that you did last year and do new things yeah, that's definitely true. And I think that, you know, both helps and hurts in that we just have had more experience just playing and, mm-hmm. you know, being around it, which helps, but also, yeah, it's changing all the time. 2018 was the year that double faults came into play. Um, and, you know, there are little rule changes throughout. They started enforcing liens on serves more. I don't even yeah. remember when that actually became a rule, but it started to be infer- enforced more yeah. in 2018. Uh, and yeah, other things too, the hitting, you know, how hitting works. 2017, you know, we started to get more flicks around the net and yeah. more over the net hitting. Um, so yeah, it is it is true that it's kind of constantly changing. Yeah. We weren't jumping in and, and you know, learning where it was. We were constantly moving with the sport and how it was developing. But yeah. What I loved that day was the finals with Moxie because, you know, it was very close. They really brought it to you. And I was, I remember I was very, uh, I was very, it was exciting to watch. Yeah. And, and I think what's, what's, was also so great is like, again, Moxie had been pushing you for two years and it's like, oh, is, is this going to be it right here? Especially because you guys had, you beat Razmataz in the semis and we're thinking, yeah. oh, it's, it's over. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, that was a fun series and it was definitely nerve wracking. I mean, obviously, yeah. Featured court, there were cameras, there were tons of people around. There were people cheering for both sides, which was really exciting. Um, and they, yeah, they brought it. I remember they played very well and I felt like we had to play our absolute best to, to take it. Um, which we, I think we did play, you know, pretty cleanly, but it was, it was a fight which was, was really fun. You yeah. were certainly in that intense mode during that game. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, okay. We went long, but I kind of, we're gone this far. I think we got to just get into 2019 real quick. Yeah. So obviously the big thing is that you and Allie um, stopped playing together. Yeah. From what I heard, it was more of a, a fizzle than a, than a bang. Um, but do you shed some light <clears throat> into how that happened? Yeah. I think it was, it was coming for a while. Um, kind of what I said earlier, we were just d differing a little bit throughout the whole season. Um, so much so that like we, we flew home from 2018 nationals together and decided on that flight that we were not going to play together for the following season. Wow. So we've been already talking about it. I think already kind of feeling like that was the way that we were headed. Um, and yeah, it was completely just a mutual I think we both felt like it would be really good for the women's game. You know, we were still struggling with numbers in women's mm -hmm. divisions. And I think we felt like if we, you know, split up and each played with someone else, that would just open up the field a little bit more, which I think it did. It, it you know, yeah. had some, some more growth in 2019. Um, and I don't think we were, yeah, tired of playing with each other. It was just a little bit, we were kind of on different pages um, mm -hmm. at that point and, uh, it felt like it was the right thing to do for for the women's game yeah. too. Did you want to continue to keep playing? Was that? Yeah, yeah. I absolutely did. I don't know exactly where Allie was at at that point. Um, I think she was a little bit on the fence, but yeah, I was fully intending to to keep going as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And then, so what led you to playing with uh, Jordy? Jordy actually wrote me a letter, um, snail mail, wow. old fashioned. <laughs> yeah, she wrote me a letter. Um, and I don't. I don't know if she knew that we were, we had decided, I don't know if we had. Oh, she was trying to poach announced you. It. I'm not sure. We may have announced it. I may have told her. Um, but yeah, she wrote me a letter. And at some point, Allie and I talked about like different options. Um, and I think that we were both really interested in playing with Ashley as well. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the other players seemed somewhat spoken for. Um, and yeah, Allie and I both knew Ashley well, and really good friends, and she's an incredible athlete, and I think has huge, had huge potential at that point, and, you know, she's, she's done so well. Um, so I don't really remember it, how, how it came to be. I think Allie decided that locationally playing with Ashley might make more sense, um, and then, yeah, Jordy wrote me a letter, and I said I'd love to play with her, yeah. and that's how that went. Did you text her, or did you send her a letter back? <laughs> I actually don't remember. I'll have to ask her. <laughs> it would be like me to send her a letter, but I may have been too excited. I may have just called yeah. her or something. Send her a letter and then also just call her to let her know something's on the way. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I have a few questions go through 2019. So essentially like the season wasn't as successful as the past. You know, you guys did have some wins, but you also had like a hand, uh, a few losses, yeah. um, especially to Bo Body who formed that year, which is Olivia Jenkins and uh, yeah. Tori. Um, well, we can talk about like the, that stuff in general, but like, did you find challenges adjusting to a new partner after four years? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, Jordy's an incredible player and was super fun to play with. And I think we did gel really well, but it's very different. Um, yeah, just different learning to set someone who has different yeah. hitting style, different references. Um, the, yeah, yeah, it was definitely yeah. different. It's hard. And then. <laughs> But so going through, did it, did it feel like a, a different, did it, uh, I'm wondering if it like revitalized you a little bit, kind of not having that, that pressure and just kind of, you know, see, or did you feel kind of, did you still feel that competitive pressure to be um, on top? Yeah. I don't know that I would call it pressure. I think just maybe competitive drive. Mm -hmm. I still wanted to, wanted it just as badly. I wanted to win. I wanted to do well. Um, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't say that it felt like pressure. I think the field was open enough now that, you know, the beginning of the season, people thought trio was going to be the team to beat. Then Bobody kind of started, you know, mm -hmm. climbing, um, uh, winging it 
started playing and yep. having really good results. So it was definitely more wide open. I don't think I felt pressure so much as just, I really wanted to win and do well. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good year. There was a handful of, of top women's yeah. team. Like you just mentioned the three you mentioned, and then the Canadian overkill yeah. um, was playing and yeah. winging it. Yeah. Winging it was surprising. I think they, they beat yeah. you guys at, at Chicago, right? They or, beat uh, trio. Trio. Yeah, yes. Trio, 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 trio. Got it. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was so surprising. You know? mm-hmm. um, yeah. That was good. I'm just going to fast forward to, to nationals. Of course, the spoiler yeah. is that you won, but truthfully <laughs> going into the day, I think I, I like, again, it was so up in the air because Bobati had the recent wins, but I think there was still some trio stock and there was still some yeah. uh, VACA stock. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It was really, it was really wide open. I think, um, Honestly, I think Jordy and I's main uh, strength or advantage, his mental fortitude, if you will, mm-hmm. we're both very even keeled players. So, you know, when we lost, we lost because we just weren't playing super well. It was not usually a, a mental issue, which I think a lot of women's players and women's teams do struggle with. Um, we had both played in nationals before. I obviously, you know, this was my fifth national tournament so mm-hmm. the the competition and the hype you know wasn't something that I think affected us as much as it may have other teams um I don't know that for sure but I think that's something that we both were pretty good mm-hmm. at keeping our cool even in pretty intense uh gameplay the thing yeah and I I think I think that's that's definitely true and then um I think the other thing is with that open field, it, it allows you the ability and the flexibility to be prepared for yeah. whatever you're going to get. I think, um, not that it was lucky, but like bow body fell earlier and you guys uh, didn't have to, uh, face them, which worked out, but I think they no, we did. We, we played them in the quarters. Oh, you did. Oh, you beat yeah. them in the quarters. Oh, yeah. my mistake. Yeah. Wait, no, no semis. Sorry. It was the semis. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, they. I can't remember who they beat, but we played them in the semis and then overkill in the finals. Okay, sorry, yeah. my mistake. No, no, no. That's yeah, fine. yeah. They were they were intense games. I think we won in two, and I yeah, I think we just played cleanly overall. Um, that was you know end of twenty nineteen serving was becoming a really big thing, which I'm not a fan of serve ball. I never really have been. I try to have good strong serves. Um, but I think that worked to our advantage, our advantage really well. At Mm -hmm. that point, a lot of people were, you know, gunning for aces, which if you can get aces, great. Um, Jordy and I were both relatively good serve returners and we got a lot of serves on. I remember in that series in particular, our serve Mm -hmm. percentage was pretty high. Um, and I think that helped, you know, just keeping the gameplay clean. Jordy's an incredible defensive player. Mm -hmm. So we were able to get more breaks just by getting the ball in play, um, but they were fun games. And I think once we had that behind us, we felt pretty confident. Um, yeah, from there on out. Did it, um, did it feel like you said the lost Rasmus has was where you just kind of were playing and winning or did it feel kind of like a, a bigger win with more momentum? Um, I think we felt very, at least I felt very much in rhythm at that point. Um, you know, Jordan and I, Jordy and I, had played a fair amount of tournaments, but not really outside of tournaments. So we were getting all of our experience with each other in tournaments, Mm -hmm. um, which was kind of difficult. But by the time we got to nationals, I think we were feeling pretty much in a groove, um, which felt really good. I think our play was just clean. Nothing crazy happened, but we got the breaks when we needed them. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. It was definitely more fun, I think, than, well, obviously than the loss, but. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. Okay. Um, we took more time than I wanted, which is okay, but I just have a couple last questions and then okay. we can wrap this up. Um, a big one I just asked before I asked Andrew was what, did you have a favorite tournament throughout the years? Um, definitely camp 2015, not necessarily a favorite tournament. There were tournaments there and we did the, one of the first co-ed tournaments. Um, actually that may have been camp 2016 that we did that. Uh, but camp 2016 2015, was the big co-ed yeah yeah you're right uh camp 2015 was super fun um i think yeah anyone was the biggest women's division that. ever too right? <laughs> yeah yeah um that was definitely a highlight nationals i go back and forth between my favorite nationals i think 2016 takes the cake um 
yeah, that was kind of one of the first really hyped women's divisions and it felt competitive and super exciting. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's a lot to choose yeah. from. <laughs> I, I think those are good, if not correct answers. <laughs> 2016 nationals really was something else. It was so yeah, exciting. It was. You know, I'm sure, right. You were in the finals the year before, mm-hmm. which I would predict not many people watch. Yeah, and I mean, then 2016, right. it was, there right. was a big crowd. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. Everyone in jerseys, like it was just right. something was special. Fun. That's awesome. Absolutely. Okay. Um, this last question is a, a little heavier and it's, you know, you have four national titles. <laughs> some people refer to you, of course, as the goat of women's round net, but some as the, just the goat of all round net. <laughs> and I just want to know kind of what that, what that means to you or how you react when you hear stuff like that. Yeah. Um, man, I was heavier. <laughs> I feel really fortunate to have been playing this long um, and to have kind of watched the sport grow. I think that's really unique and has been really special just to kind of see it develop, not only the women's game, but the sport in general, um, to be around for a long time. I've obviously met tons of incredible people. Um, I don't know that like I said, I don't think I'm the best athlete out there. I think there are a lot of women's players that are better athletes and um, yeah, maybe better players overall. I think I've worked really hard. Um, so it, it does feel good to, you know, to be able to see that pay off. Um, I definitely, yeah, I've had to, I've had to train a lot and work hard to, to get there, but it's always fun. I really, I love round net. I love it so much. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been fun to, to grow and see the women's game grow and, you know, see people develop over the years, but Mm -hmm. yeah, I consider it a privilege. (laughs) Yeah. I like that. Um, And last thing I wanted to touch on, if you could, you know, say something that you think would encourage um, other women players or any players to attend a tournament or to get into the scene, is it something you would say to them? Yeah. Ali and I always, well, yeah, I've always said, attend a tournament, sign up for a women's division wherever you can. I think that is the make it or break it experience. Um, if you're at all competitive or, you know, if you're, if you see yourself competing in the future, a tournament is completely different from pickup um, and it just changes everything. So, you know, if you can get out to one tournament, there's a good chance that you'll be hooked. And you also obviously like learn so much and grow and improve as a player by playing other teams in a competitive setting. Um, So that's usually my one nugget is sign up for a tournament wherever you can, whenever you can, doesn't have to be a women's division, but I think that that helps a lot. That I like that. That just made me think, you know, back when you were played your first tournament at creation fest, did you ever think you would be, where you are today <laughs> absolutely not nope i had no idea yeah that's <laughs> never would that's, have that's but... the same feeling i think a lot of a lot of round net players have yeah it's pretty sure. cool but all right that's that's all i i got for you today Thanks, um man. thank you for coming on and thank you everyone uh for listening it's interesting i just, just kind of zone out and pretend that we're recording a podcast i feel like <laughs> i'm just having a conversation yeah Rebecca, which is great i forgot but yeah but awesome. Thank you for listening. This is another episode of Round Night Legends with, uh, of course, a big Round Night legend here, Becca Graham. Uh, thank her for her time coming on here. I appreciate you listening. Of course, always looking for suggestions on who you want next or topics you want to cover. Got anything, just let me know. Anyway, I'll thank you for a third time and we'll catch you next time.